Do you want to add massive security vulnerabilities into your code? If you do, then make sure to be educated by Eli the Computer Guy. Eli the Computer Guy, number one in making relatively secure frameworks absolutely unsecure. Uh, so anyways, uh, here, here's, a, here's a good lesson in life of uh, basically why you should use the technology as intended and why it's important to understand how to use a particular technology, right? Uh, so anyways, this is my little note-taking platform that I've been creating. Again, it's a social media site for people who want to talk to themselves. Don't worry, it's still coming. Um, I moved into Silicon Dojo, our classroom, last week. I've been doing some other things, so this has been delayed a little bit. But, but I am continuing on ahead. Well, anyways, one of the issues that I was running into was basically how to show these tags, uh, basically as ahrefs, so that when you click on a tag, uh, it will then um, basically uh, filter and show you all of the other posts of that exact same type of tag, right? Uh, well, again, as I've talked about before, I am still new to Django, and one of the issues that I was running into is uh, that when you're dealing with the templates, right? So when you're dealing with Django, you have the views, so the views.py uh, file, uh, basically this is what's supposed to like aggregate all of your data out of your database. It's then supposed to process all of the data out of your database. Uh, and then it's supposed to send uh, all of that data to a template file, uh, right? Once you get to the template file, then you have this template code uh, to basically be able to print things out, right? So 4X in notes, that's basically each one of these notes go through and print out some things. The issue that I was running into though uh, is basically being able to deal with a list within a list, right? So basically for X in notes, so notes is a list that, uh, that gets sent to the template file and then we iterate through it. The issue is, is see tags, the tags are a list within the list and I couldn't figure out how to uh, access or basically create a list within a list. And so what I had done is I had created this code, the tags uh, underscore get function. And basically what this would do is before, before the, uh, uh, before the tags were sent to the template, it would process through all of the tags and then it would create ahrefs, uh, basically uh, hyperlinks here. Uh, and then basically it would create the hyperlink list before the hyperlink list got sent to the template. The issue that I ran into with doing testing though, uh, is you could do some interesting uh, hacking attacks basically against this platform. If you would do things such as open tags, uh, open uh, like HTML tags and then not close HTML tags. So I found when I was doing some basic testing uh, using this particular model, if in a tag, right, if in a tag I went in and let's say I edited or I, I created a note, what I could do is I could open an iframe. So I could open an iframe, put in some information, then not close, not give a closing iframe tag. Uh, and when I did that, I would break my platform. <laughs> I would break my platform. Basically, uh, that note would print all the way up until that tag was supposed to iterate through, and then nothing else would print, right? And so I realized this is a crappy way of doing things, because one of the big things to understand whenever you're using any kind of technology is, again, there's a, there's a thought process, right? There's no right or wrong way to do technology unless it's this. But anyways, there's not really a right way, wrong way to do anything. There's just the, the mentality, right? The, the paradigm that, that, that um, you know, the designers were dealing with. And so basically their idea is that, that the formatting, the formatting, right, should be in the, the template file and the intelligence should be in the views file. So when I try to put formatting in the views file to send to the template, that opened up a massive vulnerability and that was a big issue. So what I got to learn today was how to create my own 
custom uh, filters, right? So a filter is basically, see this, see four Y and X dot tags split list. I created my own custom filter. And what this custom filter does is it creates a list, right? So basically um, here, right? X dot tag. So X is a list dot tags is the, I guess the index value in that list. So what I'm doing is what is here at the index value of that list, I'm then sending to the split list custom filter that I created. And here, uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a list out of those comma separated files, sending that list back here. And now once I've turned that, that CSV, the comma separated value list into an actual Python list, I can then iterate through and then basically do the ahrefs and everything else. And so that way, uh, even if I plug in the whole iframe thing, SRC, whatever else, um, I don't get the security vulnerability like I did before. Um, so anyways, I thought this was a good example. I wish I could show you the security vulnerability, but I'm not gonna put it back. <laughs> I spent like the last hour ripping it out of my code, so I'm not gonna bring it back to show you exactly what it was. But I thought this was a very good example of when you don't quite understand the technology and so you're trying to make something work and then you make it work in a way that it's not supposed to work, how that adds vulnerabilities to the system. And so one of the big things to be thinking about whenever you use any new technology is not simply does it appear to work, not simply does it seem to work. So what I had before, and I've shown you many times, this worked, this worked perfectly, worked perfectly for the past couple of weeks. The problem was though, since it wasn't in the right way, it added vulnerabilities that shouldn't have been there. Uh, so once I saw those vulnerabilities, I had to go back and figure out how to do it properly. And so that's one of the things to be thinking about whenever you're deploying technology is just because it works, you know, it kind of, sort of does maybe what it's supposed to do. Is it really being done in the proper way? And if not, do you need to go back and uh, take a little bit of extra time to figure out how to do it the proper way. Uh, the two reasons, the two reasons you do this is one, uh, so that you don't put out some buggy ass code that people are gonna hack to high hell and back. Uh, and then two, so that you actually learn how to be professional. Uh, one of the big problems I see with uh, quote unquote technology professionals is many times they learn just enough <laughs> to barely solve a problem and then they stop <laughs> and then they stop. <laughs> Oh, and that sucks. And so that's the thing, right? They put out one piece of buggy code and they put out another piece of buggy code and they just spend years putting out crappy buggy ass code. Whereas if you just stop, you're like, okay, okay, I solved it, but I didn't solve it. I know I didn't solve it in the right way. Let me go back and figure out how to do it properly. Then that means you, you actually become a professional and become much more qualified. And then when people go and take a look at your code, they're gonna go like, ah, oh, this person knows how to do custom filters. They're a real Django coder. So anyways, there you go. Follow Eli the computer guy. <laughs> so you can destroy your systems by adding, oh, horribly, horribly, oh, horribly insecure code. Uh, as always, if you like these videos, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, leave a comment, share the whole nine yards. We are now over 1,000 subscribers on the ETCG Experiments channel. So I'm very excited about that. And with that, I'll see y'all later.